Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Our gathering song today is Our God. You can find the words uh, on the screen or in your bulletin. Please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the eternal voice from heaven, the anointed and beloved one, the spirit moving over the waters. Amen. As we approach the mystery of God, let us come in confession, trusting the love of Christ, crucified and risen. God who searches us and knows us. You have shown us what is good, but we have looked to other lights to find our way. We have not been just in our dealings with others. We have chosen revenge over mercy. We have promoted ourselves instead of walking humbly with you. With what shall we come before you? Forgive us our sin and show us your salvation in the face of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Beloved of God, you have not received the spirit of this world, but the spirit is that, is, that is from God, poured out for you in the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. Receive the promise of baptism. You are God's child. Your sins are forgiven. Rejoice and be glad, for yours is the reign of heaven. Amen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to our calling to be your daughters and sons and empower us all with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Again, good morning and welcome to everyone, both those of you in the sanctuary and those of you on our live stream. It's great to have you in worship today. Today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord Jesus in the River Jordan, being baptized by John the Baptist. 
For those of you in the sanctuary, if you'd take the friendship register, fill that out and pass it down the pew, that would be very much appreciated. And then we are also doing uh, prayer requests and prayer cards. So you can uh, either use the card in the, the pew uh, that looks like this, or you may have picked up uh, a card um, in the back when you came in this morning. And then um, about any situation, any need, anything that you would like us to pray for corporately today, and we'll collect those uh, after the sermon and then pray them out loud um, during the prayers of the people. Now I'd like, I'd like to invite the children forward for today's children's message. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Doing okay? All right. So good to see you all. Um, today, I brought a suitcase. What do we use a suitcase for? Right. Right. We put all our stuff in it when we're going someplace. Right? Okay. And I have something on here, this yellow thing. Can anybody tell what this is? Okay, it's called a luggage tag, and I have my name and my address on it. And you know why I, ha I put that on there? Because when we go traveling, like when you go on a plane and you check your luggage, well, sometimes you, you... Yes, that's right. It is. Well, this way I know that it's mine, and I get my luggage and not somebody else's, okay? So this luggage tag is a way of saying this suitcase is mine. And even if sometimes, believe it or not, sometimes if you um, give them your, your luggage at the airport and they put it under the, the, in the belly of the plane, sometimes it kind of gets lost and it takes a while to find it again. And you know the great thing about this? is that they know that it's mine, even when it gets lost, okay? Well, today we're going to hear a story about Jesus getting baptized in a river called the Jordan River. And as he was praying and as he came out of the river, God the Father said to him, you are my beloved son. You are mine. You are my son. You are my child. And the Lord says the same thing to each one of us. You are my child. You belong to me. And so you are always going to belong to Jesus, no matter what. You belong to him. And you know what? Even if we get bigger, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we kind of get lost and we don't know uh, our way in life and, and we're just uh, not sure where God is. You know what? We're always his, just like this piece of luggage is always mine. Even when it gets lost, we are God's always. Even when we sometimes get lost and he comes and he finds us and he says, you are still mine all the time. So don't ever wonder if you belong to Jesus. You always do. That will never, ever change. Let's pray. Would you all join me in prayer and repeat after me? Dear Jesus, Thank you so much that we belong to you. Thank you that we are your daughters and sons. Help us stay close to you and to love other people just as you love us. Thank you for your love. We love you too. And all God's children said, Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Thanks for coming up.
first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 43. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. While you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Sepa in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel for the baptism of our Lord is taken from the third chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke. Now, interest among the crowds kept growing, so much so that some people began to ask, could John the Baptist be the Messiah? But John quickly put an end to their speculation. He said, I baptize you with water. But there is one who is coming who will baptize you with fire and with the Holy Spirit. He is far greater than me. In fact, I'm not even worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor. And he'll gather the grain and put it in his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now, after all the people had been baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. And as he was praying, the sky opened up and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. And the voice from heaven said, You are my beloved Son. With you, I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. In 2018, we started our New Day for God's Beloved campaign, and we set for ourselves five goals. You see four of them right here in each of these banners. And the fifth one was to retire the debt on our education wing, and we did that uh, in October. And so each Sunday in January, I want to take up one of these uh, of our goals to celebrate our accomplishments, the successes we've had over these last few years, because I think it's no small feat that we did much of this in the midst of a pandemic. Today I want to talk about worship and music and the things that I believe we can celebrate and we need to celebrate. And I've got four things in mind this morning. The first, and maybe the most important, um, is that we hired Katie Ann to be our worship and music director. Um, we went... We took the leap from a half-time music director to a full-time worship and music director. 
and uh, Katie Ann has uh, blessed us in so many ways. Um, wonderful musician, singer, organist, pianist, flautist, uh, choir director, whatever you need. Um, she's been able to do that. And she's also um, kind of led our effort to upgrade our technology in the sanctuary. We are going to have um, two screens and two projectors, so no matter where you are in the sanctuary, you can see a screen easily, which is not the case right now. But she's also been the one behind our move from just in-person to online worship. And I cannot tell you how grateful I am for that. Um, I thought we'd kind of move into this slowly, you know, this online worship thing kind of start at the shallow end of the pool and make our way to the deep end. But two years ago in March, we got thrown into the deep end. So here we go. And um, I'm so grateful that it's her and not me that's been responsible for the editing and recording and all that stuff. Um, just share one little conversation to tell you why. It was March 2020, just a couple weeks after we had um, gone to online worship. We were trying to figure out YouTube services, how to do that. And so the two of us were standing over here by the piano after we, we'd recorded something. And I said, say, do you think we could figure out how to do blah, blah? I don't even remember what it was which really meant, do you think you can figure out how to do blah, blah? Katie thought a minute. She said, yeah, I think I could figure that out. Then she smiled. She looked at me and she said, now, aren't you glad you hired a millennial? <laughs> I said, yep. If it were up to me, it would be a train wreck. So we've moved online, which has been a wonderful thing, that it has allowed us to expand our, our worship life that we have now, time and distance aren't the obstacles that they used to be, that if you can't be here in the sanctuary, you can certainly join us online, which has been uh, a great thing. And so my hope is, because of that, we will all be able to worship more often. Because even if you can't be here on Sunday morning, I mean, you can literally join us from anywhere in the world. And if it can't be on Sunday morning because we post it, you can do it later in the week, and I know that's happening, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Another thing I think that's true is now it's easier to invite people to worship. I had a family tell me last winter um, that they were at a volleyball tournament or hockey tournament one weekend, I don't remember which, and they were in the uh, hotel the Sunday morning of that tournament, and they had some friends across the hall in their room, and they invited them to join for worship in their hotel room uh, online. And the family did, and, and it was much easier to invite them, and it was much less threatening to say yes in that context. So I think it's got all kinds of, of possibilities. And so um, we are going to be a hybrid church. We're going to be both and, both in person and online, not just for worship, but for, for everything as we go forward. Uh, <clears throat> number two, we set as a goal to have our praise band, play more often, like two Sundays a month rather than one, and the pandemic has kind of put that on hold, sort of, and once we get through this, we will be doing that. And I think one of the reasons that it's important is because it will allow us uh, to have worship that has more rhythm, that it will allow us to, um, to move in the kind of music that is um, so common among us today. Um, I want to give you a little um, history lesson about church music and why I think that's important. Um, back in the Middle Ages, so let's say a thousand years ago, really the only kind of church music was chants, just these beautiful lines that you know you think of when you think of monks singing these um, beautiful Gregorian chants. And we still do one of the, those kinds of things occasionally. One of the most famous is the chant um, of the Father's love begotten. And so Katie's going to lead us. We're going to sing the first verse. Sing it if you know it. But just enjoy this music, this ancient chant that's been sung for over a thousand years. And that future you 
shall see evermore and evermore. Amen. We will sing the best melodies that we can find. And so that will be part of our musical uh, ministry going forward. But fast forward to about 500 years ago, to the time of Martin Luther, and chants became hymns. And hymns, musically, have a beautiful melody, usually, um, but then they have very sophisticated harmonies. The harmonies change almost every beat, and the rhythm is fairly straightforward. It's usually pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, the master of that, certainly among Lutherans, was J.S. Bach. His harmonies are just gorgeous, they're lush, they're beautiful. And so, here's one example. Um, this is Bach's arrangement of O Sacred Head Now Wounded. Please sing along if you know it, but listen for the harmonies. They're, they are just exquisite. This hymn tradition is what I grew up with. I know this, I love this, I love singing harmonies to it. I don't know if you've ever read the Garrison Keillor piece about what it's like to sing with a thousand other Lutherans in a room when they're all singing harmony. It's gorgeous. We will continue to sing the best of our hymn tradition because these harmonies are so wonderful. Fast forward to about 50 years ago and Finally, the music of Africa, this music, Bach and so forth, that came from Europe. That's, that's my ancestry. That's my heritage. But about 50 years ago, the music from Africa came to the Lutheran church. And um, when the people who were enslaved came to this country, they brought their music, and African music is highly rhythmic. Drums are so important. And that became spirituals, and spirituals really are the birth of blues, jazz, rock, pop, country, gospel, virtually all the popular kinds of music can be traced to the black church. And that music has a beautiful melody, harmonies are pretty simple, but the rhythm is unmistakable. It is so heightened. And so that finally arrived for us, well, certainly for me, back in the 70s when we started doing contemporary music, which is really rhythmical music. When people say contemporary, I think that's what they mean. Say, we want more rhythm. And so here's an example of that, and I've asked the praise band, because we need more rhythm to do this. Um, first verse of I'm so glad. This is a good example of that whole tradition. So sing along if you know it. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Thank you. Now, we are going to pick the best melodies, the best harmonies, and the best rhythms and sing them. We're not going to be like some churches who've gone to war over what they call traditional and contemporary, which is really harmony and rhythm. We're not going to have a fight between harmony and rhythm. We're going to sing them all. We're going to sing the best of what we have. And so um, that will be our future, is to sing from as wide a variety as we can and to be as global as we can. I think it's important, too, because what that music does is it invites us to worship with our whole body, not just from the neck up, but from the neck down. 
Now, I grew up in a very conservative German Lutheran church out in Montana. And um, every Sunday when I was a kid, we had the Mount Rushmore contest. Now, what is the Mount Rushmore contest, you ask? That was to see who could sit the most still and the most stone-faced for the whole hour, okay? God forbid if you would move, right? No, we really didn't, but we could have because that was the message. Don't move, just be as still as you can, all right? And I've been trying to overcome that for the last 40 years to try and learn to worship from the neck down. As you can tell, it hasn't really succeeded with me. Um, I still struggle with that. Um, really what I want is someday to be able to do that, to praise the Lord like the women you see dancing in this slide. Um, probably not in this life for me, but hopefully in the life to come, that I'll really be able to worship with my whole brain and my whole body. And so we will continue to do that so for people like me, who are challenged in that department can keep learning and hopefully our kids and our grandkids will be more free than than I ever have been so thank you very much so the third thing <clears throat> beauty we will strive to make our services as beautiful as possible beautiful pyramids banners beautiful music beautiful flowers beautiful words beauty in every way we can. I don't know if uh, all of you know this, but these pyramids and these banners you see are the creation of one of our own. They've been designed and made by our own uh, Maxine Johnson. So thank you, Maxine. We are made to be creators of beauty that in that way we reflect the image of God. So whatever we can do to create beautiful things, we should, because the Lord is the author of everything beautiful. Every beautiful sunrise and sunset, every beautiful mountain and lake, every beautiful image and piece of music, every beautiful child comes from Him. And so whenever we enjoy something beautiful, we are drawn closer to Jesus. Beauty draws us closer to the Lord. That's why beauty is so important in our lives. It's one of the ways the Lord draws us to him. Fyodor Dostoevsky was the great Russian novelist in the 1900s. Uh, he and Tolstoy were the two great Russian novelists of that period. He wrote a book called The Idiot, uh, fascinating book. I don't have time to tell you about that right now. But in the book, he had the main character say this, the world will be saved by beauty. Now, I think that's a bit of a stretch. I don't think beauty itself will save us, but beauty will draw us to the one who does, to our Lord Jesus, because he is a beautiful savior. Beauty in grace, beautiful in power, and beautiful in love. So we will strive to make our services as beautiful as we possibly can. Number four, connection and communion. Worship is meant to connect us to the Lord. It's like the vertical axis of the cross. That scripture, sermons, communion, baptism, our music, our prayers, our being together are all meant give us a deeper connection to God. But we are also meant to be connected to one another on a horizontal axis because we are made for community. We are made for communion. And again, one of the great things about being able to do this online is that we can be connected in ways that we never were before. And I think that's a wonderful thing. It's a great blessing. But at the same time, I also believe that there's nothing like being together in person, face to face in the flesh. That there are things that, are, that happen together in person that just can't happen when we're connected digitally. I, I'm thankful for the digital connection. Uh, on Christmas Day, um, we were over at our oldest daughter's in St. Paul with her family, 
and we did a Zoom call with our son out in Colorado and our middle daughter and her family out in Seattle. And we opened presents and talked with each other, and it was great to be able to do that. But at the same time, there's nothing like being together in person on Christmas. And so, I mean, there's a reason so many people traveled over Christmas this year, realizing how much we need that and how much we missed it when we couldn't do that. And so being together in person is, is a great gift. Um, the writer to the Hebrews says, Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. This is a chance to encourage one another. <laughs> we need that right now, okay? Uh, yet one more surge, and it's like, ugh, here we go again. We need to encourage one another. By God's grace, by the Spirit's power, we can do this. We can continue to be the Lord's living, loving presence in the midst of this latest surge because it's not our power, but His power that allows us to do it. So encourage one another. And finally, I just want to say um, that I know that there are some of you who are, are probably um, on live stream today who maybe haven't set foot in the sanctuary for two years now almost, maybe, huh? Going on two years. And I just want to say this. Um, don't worry about what anybody's going to say. Don't worry about what I'm going to say. You don't need to feel awkward or embarrassed or ashamed, you know, what's, what's a pastor going to say when I finally show up again? Um, I'll promise you what I will say is it's so good to see you in person. And that is so true <laughs> from the bottom of my heart that I have missed seeing so many of you uh, in person. So I look forward to the day when you feel comfortable coming to worship in the sanctuary. It's kind of like, for me, um, when our middle daughter, Becca, went to uh, Africa. She was in the Peace Corps. She was there for two and a half years. For those two and a half years, she never set foot in our home for obvious reasons. And I can tell you that when she finally did, we didn't say, well, where in the world have you been, Becca, for these last two and a half years? Right? It was like, no, it is so good to have you home again. This is your church home. This is your church family. It will always be, and it's always good to see you face to face and in person. So, <coughs> excuse me. So worship. Worship in the sanctuary. Worship online. Worship on Sunday morning. Worship during the week. But be sure to worship. Be sure to worship with your whole body, from the neck up and from the neck down, and to let the beauty of worship draw you ever deeper into the miracle and the mystery of God's love for us all. Amen. I invite you um, to, if you have prayer cards, to pass them to the aisle, and we'll collect those during our song. And our song is uh, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Yeah. 
Please turn your minds and hearts as we confess our holy faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For our prayers today, um, I will pray a series of petitions. I will uh, pray, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. So let's lift our minds and hearts to our Lord. Help us, O Lord. To lean into you and to trust you with the challenges, the pain, and the hope of our lives. Strengthen and bless us, your church, to continue being a beacon of compassion and love. We lift up our prayers for those who may be suffering from illness, both minor and chronic, and for my grandchildren as they struggle with school issues. Lord, in your mercy, Healing God, we ask that you please place your healing hands upon those infected with COVID, that they may fully recover. recover. And we pray for uh, the COVID pandemic and for those who ha have it, that they will get better. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we give you thanks for our worship and music ministry, and we ask that you bless us as a worshiping community that we may grow deeper into the mystery of your everlasting love. And we pray uh, again for all those who are ill because of COVID and uh, because it, due to this latest surge, for all the healthcare workers who are caring for the sick who are being stretched beyond their limits, for the scientists who are working on vaccines and treatments, for the healthcare workers who are uh, distributing those vaccines and for all who are grieving the deaths of those they love because of the virus. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray that you bless all who are sick in any way, in body or mind or spirit, especially those of our own community of faith. And we uh, ask your blessing in particular on Ben Altenhofen. And we lift up to you now in the silence of our hearts, all those we know and love who are in need of your healing grace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we ask that you bless our healing and wholeness ministry and for our 31 days of prayer with those who struggle with mental or emotional illnesses and for their families. We pray that by your grace you bring healing, that you bring help, and you bring hope as only you can. Lord, in your mercy. Now we lift up to you those things which weigh most heavily upon our own minds and hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Into the manger of your love, O God, we lay our prayers. 
confident that you hear them for the sake of the Christ child, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Please greet one another with a sign of peace. Because we are giving thanks and uh, celebrating our worship and music ministry, I just want to take a few minutes to say thank you to all the people who uh, have a hand in leading worship. Uh, the word liturgy means the work of the people, and it's something that we all participate in and all have uh, chances to lead in different ways. And so I want to say thank you to lectors, acolytes, uh, altar guild members, for ushers, pianists and organists, soloists, choir members, those of you who sing and play in the praise band, um, those of you who do uh, sound and audio, um, those of you who decorate the sanctuary, people who keep the sanctuary clean, um, those of you who do children's sermons, um, the members of the worship and music committee, and anybody else I've forgotten. Um, but this really is a communal effort um, when we worship together. So just want to say thank you for all the effort, the time, the energy, uh, especially during this pandemic. It has not made things uh, any easier. So, uh, so thank you and God bless you. And please hold our worship life in your prayers that as we continue to grow into what it means to be a hybrid church in the years ahead, that we find ways to do that as faithfully and as effectively as we can. Then I also want to say thanks for your generosity, and um, again, uh, because we're getting more and more digital, just a reminder that you can give online. Um, so if you go to the website, you can find uh, ways to contribute that way, because that's just becoming more and more uh, common, I think, for, for churches everywhere. So, um, so either in person, which is wonderful, but also online as well. So thank you for that. Um, now for our offertory.
you join me in our communion liturgies, you'll find it on the screen or on page nine in your bulletin. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Share in this divine feast because you are a beloved child of God. This is the body of Christ, broken for you. This is the blood of Christ, shed for you. like to offer a blessing to the children who are not yet communing. Um, Jesus loves you with an everlasting love. May he bless you and keep you and hold you in his love now and forever. Amen. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and always. Amen. Please be seated. We've been fed by our Lord to be his loving, living presence in the world, so please take note of the ways we're doing that as a community of faith. Um, several things I need to highlight. Um, Sunday school starts today, and uh, confirmation um, resumes in person um, this coming week. Um, the food distribution that was scheduled for tomorrow is not going to happen, both because of COVID and because of the cold. So if you would pass that word, especially to anyone uh, you know who uses that so that they uh, know that we're, we're not able to do it um, this month. Um, we are also seeking nominations for leadership positions throughout the church, so church council, committees, task forces, and so forth. So if you're, um, please pray about that, and um, if you're feeling led, um, please talk to Tim Johnson uh, about um, how you might be a leader in our community as we go forward in this, this coming year. Um, a reminder as well um, that our annual meeting is uh, January 30th, so three weeks from today. Um, we will have it after the service, um, both in the sanctuary and online, so you can join us uh, either way. Then um, we are um, continuing our 31 days, 31 ways to pray for families who are uh, dealing with mental illnesses. So there's the hard copy in the back. You can pick it up that way. Uh, it's getting emailed. It's on um, our website as well. So I encourage you to continue to pray for those who are um, wrestling with that, um, especially during this COVID time. It just exacerbates um, the struggle for so many people. So please um, make that a part of your daily prayers this month. So we do that as a community of faith. One of the things that we do um, to help those who, uh, who have that struggle. And then um, today you're invited uh, to have a conversation with me in the living room. We were going to do it in the library, but now it's in the living room. Um, just uh, time for me to kind of bring you up to speed on what's happening, um, but also a chance for me to listen and hear from you. So you're, 
you're welcome to, to join us in the, the new living room. And um, just uh, <laughs> kind of a heads up, and it's not something you don't already know, but given this latest surge, um, we're just going to adapt as we need to, and we'll just pivot however we need to pivot. So we'll try and keep you up to date as kind of things shift and change, and we'll try and make the best decisions we can as, as we go forward. Um, but I, I think it's going to be a very challenging month. And I would just pray that as light of Christ, as a community, as God's children in the world, um, that God gives us um, the strength to show grace under pressure. I hope we can be as gracious, as patient, as caring, as loving in what I think is going to be a, a difficult and challenging month. So um, please encourage one another, pray for one another, um, that we are light and love and laughter um, in the midst of just a hard time, because I think that's one of the best things we can do right now, is just be a gracious presence in the world. With that, I invite you to stand and join me in our sending liturgies. you find it on the screen or on page 11. Now may Christ, the wisdom and the power of God and the source of our life together, keep you united in mind and purpose, and the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.
Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.